Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome again. Welcome to Pray O'Clock. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are having this weekly time of prayer and fasting because we want that as a church, we could build a lifestyle of prayer and being filled by the Holy Spirit. So last Sunday, we started with our brand new series called Alpha and Omega, Knowing the God of Love in the Old and New Testament. Now, I believe that this series is very important to us because number one, God wants to know us personally, not just theoretically, not just intellectually, but most important is experientially. Okay. Second is we need to know that He is a God of love. And connected to that, number three, we need to know that God is the same God throughout the Bible. Now, there are people saying, how come the Lord God is, um, easily gets, the, the God in the Old Testament easily gets angry and he, he loves to punish people. And in the New Testament, he's always patient and always loving. So in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 9, verse 23 to 24, Thus says the Lord, let not a wise man boast of his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast of his might, and let, and let not the rich man boast of his riches. Verse 23 is telling us not to be boastful of our wisdom, of our intellect, of the things that we know. Okay, We should not be boastful of our power, of our position, of our influence. We should not also be boastful of our possessions, of the wealth that we have. In verse in Isaiah 44, verse 6, thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and there is no God besides me. Now, here we can see that the Lord, that God is proclaiming his glory. Okay, First meaning, he did not derive his being from other beings. In contrary to that, an idol cannot be first because someone has to create an idol. So for our devotion for today, we will be looking again at the lives of the Israelites. Okay? And the title of my Devo for today is Pray for Rescue and Respond Prayerfully. Again, that's Pray for Rescue and Respond Prayerfully. Now, there are two things that we need to remember in praying for a rescue. What are those? It's promise and problem. Now, promise, in, 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 in the story of the Israelites, we can see that in Genesis 15, 5, promise, a promise was given to the Israelites, here particularly with Abraham. In verse 5, he took him outside. God took, out, God took Abraham outside and he said, Now look towards the heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, and he said, so shall your descendants be. Now we have to remember that during this time when the Lord spoke to Abraham, Sarai was still barren. So it's very, very impossible in, in Abraham's mind and in Sarai's mind. It's very, it's very impossible for them to have a child. And what more to have many children. Okay, but this is the promise of God to the Israelites. Again, and, and again, in Genesis 15, 13 to 14, God said to Abraham, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, where they will be enslaved and oppressed for, for, for hundred years. But I will also, this is a promise, but I will also judge the nation whom they will serve, and afterward, they will come out with many possessions. Okay. Now, question for everyone. What do you think are God's promises to you that you're holding on to? Now, that's the promise of God to the Israelites. Let's go to the problem. In Exodus 1, 13-14, the Egyptians compelled the sons of Israel to labor rigorously, and they made their lives bitter with hard labor in mortar and bricks and all kinds of labor in the field, all their labors which they rigorously imposed to them. Now, when I was a kid, my Lolo loves to do small upgrades in their house. But he will do it DIY or do it yourself. <clears throat> so what he will do is he will, hire, he will hire us, his grandchildren, to do the labor. So we will carry 
um, hollow blocks, we will mix cement, we will paint the house, we will paint the roof, okay? I tell you, it's not easy. Sobrang hirap po nun. Especially when it is under the sun. Now, what more, looking at the verse, what more, okay, when you are asleep and someone is watching your back and every time na magkakamali ka, lagot ka, okay? Now, with that, because of the oppressions in verse in Exodus 2 verses 23 to 25 we can see that the sons of Israel sighed because of the bondage and what they cried out and their cry for help because of their bondage rose up to God in verse 24 so God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham Isaac and Jacob God saw the sons of Israel and God took notice of them now i'm part of the hashtag not alone team and as one of the program coordinators together with our team we go around different campuses doing values formation doing leadership seminars around the country <clears throat> and and as we do this we are hearing countless of stories like abuses bullying and neglect among the Filipino youth. One particular story that I want to share with you is there's this young lady, her parents got separated, so she stayed with her grandparents. <clears throat> While she was there, she was sexually abused by a relative. And because of that, she moved to her mom. But there she was again abused, this time by her stepdad. Again, because of that, she... She, she moved again he went as she went to her dad. But there she was physically and verbally abused by her stepmom. It's a very sad story. And maybe for some of you here, you are going through challenges in life. Maybe financially, sickness, maybe relationally, spiritually. Now, we, when you are in that, in that situation... You have to pray for rescue. Okay? I like what Pastor Marty said. <clears throat> we need to understand this promise and our problem to appreciate the need to be rescued. In reality, we will only ask for rescue to someone who is capable of helping us. Why? Because it will be useless if we go to someone who can't help us. Sayang effort natin, waste of time, or waste of effort. Second is we will only ask for rescue when we know that we cannot do anything more about our situation. So two things, capability of the one who will rescue us. Second is our hopelessness. The good news is God is very much capable of rescuing, okay, rescuing us no matter how big our problems are. I like what Pastor Ricky said last Sunday, our problems may be great, but God's promises are greater. And you know what? Sometimes we stop and focus on our big problems. Okay? We focus on our big problems in life without us re realizing that God's promises are bigger. We have to remember that God is a promise keeper. Going back to the story of the Israelites, the 10 plagues, God used the 10 plagues to rescue the Israelite from oppression. <clears throat> I want to share another story. That's July 1, 2023. My wife gave birth to our son. And it was a time that I really remember asking God to rescue me. I was sitting outside the delivery room of a hospital waiting for my wife to give birth to our son. Doctor, the doctor called me and said the baby was out already but in critical condition. At the same time, my wife was struggling due to her, due to her high blood pressure. <clears throat> now, at that time, I really asked the Lord, Lord, please intervene and answer my prayer of healing and safety for both my wife and my baby. The Lord answered, one is yes and another one is no. I was able to bring home my wife, but not our baby. It's not the rescue that we wanted but still we trusted the Lord in what he is doing. Uh, question for everyone. Let's ask God 
to rescue you from any challenging situation you are in right now. So let's take this time to pause and pray. Okay, going back. Um, point number two. <clears throat> point number two is. Shit. We have to respond prayerfully. Okay. Now, how do we respond after the rescue is very important. It's very important. It's critical. Now, I don't know about you, but I have this tendency to forget about God after the rescue. That's why I really, really, really need accountability and I really need to be part of family group. Now, question, are you familiar with GOAT or greatest of all time? Yes? But are you aware that there is growth? G-R-O-A-T. That's the greatest rescue of all time. Now, Jesus' death on the cross, in order for us to be saved, is the greatest rescue of all time. And with that, with that, we should respond properly. Last Sunday, we learned that our purity and pursuit are very important. Now, in purity, uh, God, gave us, God gave us very serious ordinance to the Israelites to stay away from sin and to live a holy life. In Exodus 12, 15, sab, eh, sabi dito, Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, but on the first day you shall remove leaven from your house. For whoever eats anything leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. Now, oftentimes, sin is a, um, a yeast is a symbol of sin. So the Lord is telling the Israelites to turn away from their sins, turn away from their idols. Okay? In 1 Peter, similarly in 1 Peter 1, 14, 16, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lust which were yours in your ignorance, but like the Holy One who called you, sabi dito, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. Um, first Peter, we can see First Peter in New Testament and Exodus in Old Testament. So we can see here that the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. Okay? Now, <clears throat> in Matthew 26, 41, it says, Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. Why? The Spirit is feeling being the spirit is willing being prayerful okay now 
questions, do you love being in the presence of the Lord? Yes. Now, here in Matthew, Jesus knew that his disciples will, will fail. Okay? And same thing with us. We will all fail. That's why we need to draw closer to God. And he is encouraging us into victory. I believe that it is very important for us to be prayerful in order for us to be pure and, in, and for us to be in constant pursuit of God. Now let's ask, and our question is, let's ask the Lord for wisdom in dealing with the, te with the temptations around us. Again, going back to our devotion, pray for rescue. Pray for rescue and respond prayerfully. Uh, we need to pray for rescue, again, looking at God's promises and our problems. Knowing those two things will really, really uh, push us to pray to God for us to rescue. Second is we need to respond prayerfully. And again, it is very important for us to be prayerful so that we can remain pure and we can remain in our constant pursuit of God. Now, I want to end with this. Going back to my story about our son, yes, we lost our son last year, um, July 1, 2023. When I lost him, honestly, I was tempted to turn away from God. I was tempted to quit ministry and to, to, to forget about God. Um, but with that, the other side of my mind, I also remember where, where God has picked me up. And with that, I know the situation and it's, very, and it's a very bad situation. I don't want to be back from where God had met me. One thing that I usually say is, uh, one thing, after the, the incident, I usually say this with my friends, um, magtatampo at lalayo po ba ako sa Diyos? Eh, ang ganda na nung ginawa ng Diyos sa buhay ko. So, with that, uh, we move forward. My wife and I trusted the Lord and His plans for us. And, this is this is the um here is the great thing. Right now my wife is eight months pregnant to a baby boy. So the 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 we, we lost our son last year, but God is so good, God is so gracious, God is God is God. My wife is now almost eight months pregnant, and uh we are expecting another baby boy next month, May. So please cover us. With that, please cover us with your prayers, especially our baby. Um, again, our debo for today is pray for rescue and respond 
prayerfully. And I hope that we are all encouraged to remain praying because our God is the Alpha and Omega and He never changes. That's it. God bless us all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you, Lord God, again, for, for giving us the stories of the Israelites, Lord God. And thank you with that, Lord, that we could learn a lot from their stories. Lord, we ask for your help, especially for those people who are really struggling right now. I pray, Father God, that you will just minister to each one of us in a special way, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that you will just meet our needs, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you will help us, Lord God, to continue to trust you, to continue to believe in you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you did on the cross. And because of that, we are assured, we are assured the great things, Lord God. Lord, again, we thank you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Thank you. All right. Sorry for that. But thank you, Brother Mark, for that encouraging message. It's truly great to know that uh, the God from the Old Testament is the same God that uh, there was in the New Testament. And we can be sure now that he is the same God that we have right now. So um, as as uh, Brother Mark mentioned a while ago, we can be pure by being prayerful, by lifting and praying for rescue from God, and by staying connected with Him. And that is why, brothers and sisters, now we can take this time to pray for our church, for our leaders, for the Philippines, and of course, for our family and ourselves. So you can send your prayer request here in the group, in the chat box below. And also, we would like to encourage everyone to pray for the prayer items that you see uh, as the Lord leads you. So for the next few minutes, there will be prayer slides to be shown to guide us in our prayer time. So I hope that you will have a blessed time as you pray.
All right. Thank you uh, for we praise God for this time that we can just pray to be with Him, speak to Him. And I hope that everyone as well uh, is blessed by the time of prayer. It's such a wonderful sight to see that brothers and sisters are praying together and for each other. So to close our time in prayer, let me call on our Elevate Main Hub Campus Coordinator, Euclid Abogamba. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the rescue. We thank you, Lord God, for your mighty hand, Lord God, upon us. We know, Lord God, that with you, nothing is impossible. And so we pray, Lord God, that all of us here, I pray, Lord God, na we will just be able to just surrender and trust in you with our whole life. Father, you said in John 16 that that in me you may have peace, in the world you will have tri tribulation, but take heart that you have overcome the world. And truly, Lord God, we have been always been vic victorious, Lord God. You already won. And so we know, Lord God, that we ourselves, we are on the winning side. And so we just ask, Lord God, that we will live as one who, who has already won, as one who will really... Continue finishing that line, Lord God, that race, that you will fight the good fight of the faith. And I thank you, Lord God, for the message of Mark. Continue, Lord God, to also bless him, protect yung, yung bagong baby. We pray, Lord God, that, uh, that you also continue to protect all of us, Lord, our testimonies, that we will live for you alone, not for ourselves anymore, that we will stand for you and not for anyone else. Father, we pray also, Lord God, for the whole church. We pray, Lord God, that uh, that we will continue to do to make disciples of all nations as you have called the church to do. And at the same time, Father, in all of these things that we, we can do, Father, at the end of the day, Lord God, that we will be, we will be your, your disciples, we will be your followers who will continue to obey you uh, for the rest of our lives. Again, we thank you, Lord God. For this time of prayer, may you just continue to speak to us. We love you so much. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen and amen.